Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome to lecture number 13. Today we are going to discuss the generation of diversity of lymphocyte antigen receptor. So, in last class we are discussing like different antibody, different antigen. So, their hyper variable region is different because they need to interact with different um, antigen molecule. Okay, or to be specific different epitopes, right. But the thing is if you consider I to already told during a basic uh, uh, concept discussion of uh, basic concept of immunology while, while we are discussing that part that the number of genes predicted genes it is not exactly known the number of predicted genes in human say 25,000, 30,000. 35,000 depending on the different algorithms. But if we consider the number of antibody present in our body say at any time point it is 10 to the power 8 different variety. Okay. So, if each antibody is a protein and each protein should have at least one gene. Okay. So, then we should have 10 to the power 8 different genes, but we, we do not have that right. So, how this diversity is developed? So, that was a big question though it was solved long time back by Professor Susumu Tonegawa in MIT. Okay. What is the basis how it is uh, now we know, but before that I mean when people was not known what is the origin of this variety origin of this gene what we used to how people know this uh, how so much variation in the hyper variable region develop or generate in antibody as well as T cell receptor. So, in this uh, in the incoming few lectures we are going to discuss about generation of lymphocyte antigen receptors. I will mostly focus on the primary immunoglobulin gene rearrangement and their uh, variation and which is almost equally applicable for T cell receptor gene rearrangement also but definitely if there is anything special for T cell receptor we will discuss and as a last part of it we will see the structural variation in immunoglobulin constant gene which you already know a little and how this constant region is changing and how this different immunoglobulin uh, isotypes are formed. So, we will see isotype switching as a last part of it. So, I will start today with immunoglobulin gene rearrangement or generation of antibody diversity. Okay. In one of my basic concept class I told you to go and check what is the meaning of repertoire. Okay. So, now I am giving the complete collection of antibody specificities available within an individual is known as antibody repertoire. So, with time it is changing because uh, B cell is continuously developed. So, their receptor modification and all these things when you will study the B cell development you will see it is a continuous process. So, the variety of antibody is also changing, their amount is changing. So, that is why antibody repair is not fixed okay, at particular time. Today, what I have the variety of antibody in my immune system, it may be different after a month or so. So, this is antibody repair. So, the complete collection of antibodies specificities available within an individual is known as antibody repair. But before the genetic engineering or recombinant technology is known or the different techniques were discovered, people used to guess like what could be the origin of this diversity, how come so different type of uh, receptor is generated. So, there are two theory are proposed, one is germline theory and another is somatic diversification theory. In germline theory, it is said that separate gene for each different antibody chain and the antibody repair is largely inherited. 
the germline theory is saying that separate genes are there for each antibody chain and antibody repertoire is largely inherited. That time the number of gene in human was not known. So, the prediction was not irrational, but which is not true we know because we do not have that many genes. And somatic diversification theory is saying is saying limited number of inherited variable region sequence undergo alteration within B cell during lifetime of an individual to generate the observed repertoire. So, now if I ask you which one is true, one is saying each one have gene, each antibody has individual gene or separate gene and it is largely inherited. Another theory is saying that the V region sequence undergo alteration during lifetime and this V region is inherited. Okay. So, let me tell you the answer. The answer is both are partially correct. Okay. Neither one is completely true. It is definite that each antibody is produced by different gene, but how this gene originate it is not saying and another one and it is also saying it is inherited this is also partially correct. Okay. Part of this gene is inherited. So, now we will discuss how this diversity is originate. So, primary immunoglobulin gene rearrangement I will discuss now. Okay. So, this picture this picture you have already seen right. So, this part is I am coming again and again you see. So, the red part is the most important region of antigen interaction this is also known picture only difference if you see is the leveling of this region okay, D E B A G F C C prime and C double prime. Because why this this is actually these letters are indicating the uh, different beta strand in this figure. So, this beta strand is designated as B then E then B just to understand which between which beta strand this hyper variable region is there. So, if you see that B and C there is one then G and F there is another and C prime and C double prime there is another. Okay. And now, this is this same picture is made little sim simple simplified form in here. So, it is A B then hyper variable 1 and then C. So, between B and C the hyper variable region between B here and C if you see this is which one this hyper variable region is H B 1. So, C and C prime so this is H B 2 and F and G what is uh, between this these two F and G this one is hyper variable region 3. So, this is a schematic presentation of H B 1, H B 2 and H B 3. Our cons our main idea to see I mean of this class I mean this lecture will be just to prove how this variation comes and how this hyper variable region are different. Okay. How come so many variable uh, uh, sequence are present in this total repertoire of antibody. Let, let us understand first the antibody part and then or the B cell receptor part then we will see how this is applicable for T cell receptor part. Okay. So, this figure if you see this one is again here we are showing. Okay. So, this figure if you go here and just what is the difference here difference is H B 1 is replaced by C D R 1 it is all same. Okay. So, now if you see C D R 1 and C D R 2 okay, are in this region. So, in the gene I will come slowly before that I think we should go here. I will come back to this slide again. So, what is found that in light chain 
Okay. In light chain the variable region is composed of in light chain the variable region is composed of two different segment one is V another is J and light chain has only one constant domain. So, there is one constant domain. So, this is the DNA structure this is a germline DNA genomic I mean in the before the B cell mature. So, what happened during maturation or B cell formation there is a recombination happening in that recombination this B and J join together. This is also at the DNA level in this figure wherever two lines are there there this is DNA and single line is representing the RNA. Okay. So, these B and J recombine and then make a continuous structure V J together and which is again there are some space and constant region is there. So, light chain actually the light chain variable region is present in chromosome or in germline level as two segment one is V little bigger another is J. Okay. So, at germline level they are separated, but by recombination they come together and make the complete variable region and here L stands for the leader sequence or the signal peptide in this figure L stands for leader or the signal peptide. Okay. So, the B and J together makes variable region of light chain. So, I am going back to the previous slide. So, now if you see this B and J they are separated they together make the variable region and if you see that both CDR 1 and CDR 2 they are already present in variable B segment, but CDR 3 is actually the contributed both by B segment as well as J segment and this during this recombination this part is very important and we will see with time that that means B and C uh, B and J while join it they made CDR 3 and the CDR 3 originates from two or more individual gene segment in case of light chain it is two segment some part contributed by V and some part contributed by J they become together make the CDR 3. Same way if you see in heavy chain the variable region then there is a D segment D stands for diversity and a J segment. So, first what happen D and J join together make D J and this this is also at DNA level and then another recombination happen between D J and V they together make V D J the complete variable region of the heavy chain and this D J together and in fact V D J all three segment together is making the C D R 3. Okay. So, here the C D R 3 originates in light chain with by two components and in heavy chain by three different segment of DNA. So, the chances of variability in C D R 3 is maximum. Okay. So, if you see the light chain now I am going back and forth. So, uh, so please excuse me. So, from this DNA say for light chain recombination happened now it is a DNA and it is the uh, rearranged. So, V J in light chain and V D J in heavy chain rearranged then transcription happened. In transcription we will not see that J was uh, uh, just far in the genome. So, it is together then by splicing they become together this uh, this is one mRNA okay, the precursor RNA with the poly A tail then splicing happened. So, the variable region and constant region comes together. So, variable region and constant region comes together and which gives the protein product like this. And if you see this region the antigen binding region you see the yellow part which is the J region okay, which is also a part contributing in the CDR 3 are very much important because it is present in the antigen binding site. Same way if you see in the heavy chain the D J comes together make D J and then D J and B together make V D J then transcription happen 
after transcription the C region in this case the heavy chain you know the C region or the constant domain has this is if you consider this is IgG there are C H 1, C H 2 and C H 3 and this violet color is the hinge region. So, this constant region is composed of C H 1 hinge and C H 2 C H 3 all these are together. So, they come as the single precursor RNA then splicing happened where V D J is already joined by recombination. So, V D J and constant domain come together in the mRNA and mRNA gives the product of the heavy chain which has variable region which is combined V D J plus C H 1 C H 2 and C H 3 the heavy chain. But if you see carefully that V D J all three are taking part in the antigen binding side. So, even they are very small in comparison to the V region J in case of light chain and D J in case of heavy chain are very very important because that makes the antibody different with respect to antigen recognition. Now, we will see how this thing happened. So, okay. so this V D J recombine, so how this is going to help in the diversity because this, this is the basis like what is the construction of heavy chain and light chain chain gene in the chromosome, but this is not saying anything about the diversity or the so much variability in receptor of uh, antibody B cell receptor and T cell receptor. Okay. So, here is the magic. It was discovered that in our chromosome we have multiple copy of variable region, multiple copy of diversity region, multiple copy of joining region which actually makes the antibody spe more specific or different specificity against different antigen which I do not remember exactly, but I will repeat again uh, repeat here if I uh, uh, already told you there are two type of light chain present. Okay. So, one antibody is composed of one type of heavy chain and one type of light chain. So, there are two type of light chain genes are there one is called kappa and there is called lambda. So, one set both kappa and lambda has V and J segment separately. So, kappa has some V segment and J segment lambda has some V segment and J segment. So, what was discovered actually initially when this diversity was discovered at genetic level or molecular level it was shown that in any individual we have variable region for light chain say for example, kappa light chain we have 34 to 38 numbers of V region. For kappa chain joining region we have 5 okay. and for lambda we have lambda light chain we have 29 to 33 variable region 4 to 5 joining region. So, total if you consider the light chain it may be, but in one antibody in any particular antibody the light chain should be either kappa type or lambda type. It is not that in one hand it is kappa and another part is lambda it is either lambda type or kappa type. Okay. So, it is not that all are present in heavy chain at the same time the variable region we have 38 to 46 in number. We have a diversity region of 23 or the D segment 23 and joining we have 6 and what does it mean or what is that? If you see in the chromosome level or the if I make a cartoon or the map of the genetic it is like this. In light chain okay, this is a lambda light chain locus in chromosome in lambda light chain locus it is say there are how many I said I said 34 to 38 variable region. So, sorry uh, 29 to 33 variable region in case of lambda in lambda chain we have V lambda 1, V lambda 2, V lambda 3, 4, 5, 6 and up to 30. Okay. So, 1 to 30 and then there is a space then there is one joining region constant region joining region constant region how many we have 
we have 4 to 5 joining region for lambda. So, similarly we have say for example, this case we have 4. So, we have 1 j 1 lambda 1 um, uh, uh, constant 1 j 2 constant 2 j 3 constant 3 j 4 constant 4. So, it is this all this variable region are in series then alternate j 1 and constant region. In case of kappa the arrangement is slightly different in case of kappa it is all this 34 to 38 variable region again in tandem or inverted way that I will come what is this inverted and tandem. So, they are present one after another then there is a space then all 5 j region is here then only one constant domain. Okay. So, this is the chromosomal arrangement of kappa light chain. The heavy chain we have three domain one is B, D and third one is J. Right. So, how many variable domain say for example, if I consider that in average there are 40 variable domain of H chain we have 40 variable region then as space then all 23 D region is one after another and then 6 joining region and then this C mu, mu stands for I g m. Okay. All these, all these you the constant portion if you remember I g m, I g d, I g g it is normally the gene is named like I g m is mu, I g d is delta, I g g is gamma like that and uh, uh, I g e epsilon, I g a is alpha. So, same way C mu is I g m. Okay. I hope you understand. So, these are the numbers and this is the orientation clear. So, lambda is this. So, now, so before going to do that. So, now if you think that variable region say I am considering only say kappa. Okay. I have for example, I have 30 variable region and 5 joining region. If there is an opportunity or a uh, chance like any of the variable region can join any of the joining region and finally, make the complete variable region of light chain because this is a segment of variable region of light chain. So, variable segment of kappa is 30 and the joining region is 5. If it is so, so any one of any one of this variable region can join any one of this. So, there are say this is uh, I am talking kappa. So, there are 38 total and there are 5 total joining. So, what will be the number possible it is very simple mathematics. How many different kind of segment variable segment we can have? The mathematics is very simple 38 times 5. If randomly any variable region can join with any joining region the total number of variability will be 38 into 5. Okay. Same way if we consider for the lambda chain here there are 30 there are 30 variable region and there are 4 joining region there are 4 joining region. So, what is the possible variation again simple mathematics 30 times for 4 is equal to 120. Okay. So, now now there are total number of variation possible here is uh, 30 times 4 is 120 and here 30 say 40 for roughly calculation say if this is equal to 40 and we have 5 what will be the total it will be 200 okay 200 or to be to specific it is 190 okay 190 so this is the possibility one to uh, 120 possible lambda variable region 190 to 200 possible kappa light region same way if you calculate how many different kind of heavy chain is possible what we have to do 
we have to just multiply this variable segment into because any d can join with any j. So, that will give actually 23 into 6. So, this is the combination of I mean possible combination of d and j and then that combination can join any one of these 40. So, this will be total number is 40 into 23 into 6. Okay. So, you can easily calculate I am not spending time for calculation. Okay. So, now suppose this is x. Okay. Suppose this is x and so if I consider now if I consider now. So, what is I am uh, telling you the number again light chain 120 lambda light chain 120 possible variation kappa light chain 200 possible variation and heavy chain variation where randomly any d can join with any j and any d j combination can join with any v segment the possibility is x. So, that gives some variation. So, we do not have that many gene, but after recombination different segments can produce variety of variable region of the gene segment and you, you know that constant region does not have any role in the antigen specificity. So, they do not have many we have very few either one is fine right it may be lambda or um, kappa or heavy chain how many are there heavy chain only 5 difference are there a d e a and g. Okay. So, different there are few subtypes that we will discuss later if when time comes. So, now what is happening in antibody molecule what is there in antibody. So, let us see in antibody molecule what, what is there antibody is the combination of one heavy chain and one light chain right which is linked with the disulfide bond same thing is repeated here okay one heavy chain one light chain and they are also linked so in any antibody there should be how many light how many light chain in any antibody there is one light chain and one heavy chain and finally they are dimer okay heavy chain light chain combination is dimer so now if you go back to the calculation what we see 120 any one of these 120 can make antibody molecule any one of this x right any one of this x and any one of this 200 can make antibody molecule final antibody molecule with any of this heavy chain. So, what will be the possible number? any one of 120 and any one of 200. So, total is say 3 uh, this this one 120 plus 200 is equal to 320. So, 320 is the possible light chain and we have x number of possible heavy chain. So, if, if this is also random if this is random like any one of this 320 and any one of this x can recombine what is the possible number of antibody molecule very simple mathematics again you just have to multiply 3 2 0 times x that gives you the variety of different antibody even that I mean it is surprising I mean so few number of segment just by recombination and uh, random recombination can give so many variety of antibody but if you calculate the number it is still very very low with respect to the number of antibody we are having at any time point. So, next time we will see or in the next lecture we will see how that number we can reach today we will finish here and in next class we will see how that 10 to the power 8 or 10 to the power 10 variety or 10 to the power 13 variety of T cell receptor we can have this will not explain you that much, but even also I mean even if it is not taking you that much number or that many number, but it is also very good like small segments 
and random recombination can increase the final product in a good in I mean much more in number than it is present. We do not have to suppose just 320 if I see 320 how many species we know we do not have to have the 320 gene. So, if you just consider the light chain gene we do not have to have 320 gene ok very few segment by random recombination can give us 320 possible gene ok. So, in next class we will see how the diversity is increased what are the other factors of diversity of the nucleotide uh, that immunoglobulin receptor. Thank you for today.